Singapore only has three airlines, so I suppose this is kind of the worst one by default. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point, narrated video tours about resorts and flights all over the world. This is my 99th video, and today we're making the short hop from Singapore to Denpasar on Bali, aboard Jetstar Asia. Stick around, and I hope you enjoy the flight. Welcome and a very good morning from Singapore as we head to the airport for my 1045 flight to Bali. If you'd like to know more details about the fare that I paid today or my next five videos in queue, please be sure to check out the description below. Today we're heading out of Terminal 1, which Jetstar Asia currently flies out of, though just a few days ago Changi announced that they're moving to Terminal 4, which Jetstar was not too happy about. Perhaps it's because they don't want to be so far away from the beautiful, stunning jewel, which is right in front of us. Speaking of jewels, if you end up thinking that this is a gem of a video, did you know that I'd really appreciate you clicking that thumbs up and subscribe button? It's true. And it's available today for the low, low price of zero dollars. That's Singapore dollars, of course. If you'd like to chip in a bit though, there's also a link to my new Patreon below. Whatever you choose, always feel free to leave a comment below with any suggestions or critiques that you may have. I'm always looking for ways to improve my content. In advance, a genuine thank you for all that you do. So, COVID times and all, I arrived at the airport three hours ahead of time. Funny thing though, Jetstar doesn't open their check-in counters until two hours before departure. So while we wait, let's check out today's stats. We'd be departing 25 minutes behind schedule, heading up to 36,000 feet for our two and a quarter hour flight to Denpasar, where we would end up arriving 14 minutes ahead of schedule. Check-in was very systematic once it opened. First up, staff manually checked your eligibility to enter Indonesia. Then you went onto a self-service kiosk to get your boarding pass and baggage tag. Then you lugged that over to the self-service baggage check area where an agent would confirm that you did in fact pay for two carry-ons and you would thank God that she didn't ask you to weigh either one of them. And finally, your boarding pass would be checked before leaving the check-in area by a Jetstar employee who again confirmed that I was allowed two carry-ons. When this works smoothly as it has here, I have absolutely no problem with self-check-in. Head through the automated passport control and into the terminal we were. No lounge this morning, and no Starbucks either with a line like that. But I suppose there's really no escaping them here today. Give this video a like if you are mildly obsessed with Bakwa, as I am. As we head to the gate, there is something that I was very wrong about. Specifically, the size of Jetstar Asia's operation. Apparently, it's way, way, way smaller than I remembered, or frankly, just assumed. Currently, they only have 13 destinations from their Singapore base, with a meager 7 aircraft in the fleet. When you think of low-cost carriers in Asia, you just imagine airlines with hundreds of aircraft, flying to hundreds of destinations. Jetstar, in case you don't know, is the low-cost airline wholly owned by Qantas and wholly loathed by all of Australia. Jetstar Asia, who we are flying today, is part of the airline group that Qantas holds a 49% stake in. The parent airline did operate a small New Zealand network, which they pulled out of in 2019, and they also had a joint venture with Vietnam Airlines operating Jetstar Pacific, which also ceased and rebranded after Qantas pulled out. Now, there's still just a small operation in Jetstar Japan. As we board, I'll mention that I'm not adding onboard graphics for super standard layouts like we have today anymore. It's just an all economy layout with extra legroom in the first and exit rows, as you'll see. For today's flight, I paid a reasonable $12 to snag an exit row seat, which is generally worth every penny on airlines with a standard 28 or 29 inches of pitch, the measurement that airlines use to define legroom. The seats were comfortable, but there is just so much gray. Gray carpets, gray seats, gray livery. It's almost like they're trying to outdo American Airlines. One thing that I'm a big fan of though on overwing A320 exits are the armrests that are built into the wall. 
These armrests are generally a bit higher than the normal armrests and provide for a little bit extra wiggle room. Of course, there are individual air nozzles as well. Pushback began, which started a long taxi that would end up taking us out past the Terminal 5 construction zone for my first ever takeoff from runway 20 left, which would also give me my first view of the skyline after like 30 flights, always being on the wrong side of the plane. The spool up and city views are next. Our route today would be a pretty straightforward one, taking us down to the southeast. Here we have the tray table. Surprise, surprise, nothing groundbreaking here. As for the in-flight menu, I was surprised how limited it was. Like, no real food. Just instant noodles, some basic drinks, and some very overpriced alcohol. So I began a bit of Netflix, which at this point really is the only reason my iPad exists, and what felt like a very short while later we were already in descent over Java, as we began our final approach into Denpasar from the due west. One of my favorite approaches brings us over Jimbaran Bay as we touch down. There we are. We moseyed our way over to the gate and then had a fairly straightforward entry procedure. Note that for many of the countries that previously had visa waivers prior to COVID, that program is still suspended as of the time of this video coming out, so you may need to purchase a visa on arrival. You literally just have to hand them your credit card and you get a generic stamp that takes up a full half page of your passport for absolutely no reason. So overall, a very, very standard flight, but they gotta happen sometime and it's not a bad thing. This was less than half the price of the only other option on Singapore Airlines, so today, standard was my friend. Now onto the flip-flop score. Feel free to pause to take a closer look. I hope you liked the video, and I hope that you tune in for my next video, which isn't just my 100th video, but a very special 100th video from the Como Uma Ubud.